In this problem, we have a number of questions related to butadiene and its conjugated pi system. The compound shown up here in the corner is butadiene, and as you can see, the carbons are sp2 hybridized. So that would leave each carbon with an unhybridized p orbital. Our job is to take these four unhybridized p orbitals and make some molecular orbital diagrams for these. The first thing we want to know is the number of nodes that you have for each MO. So MO number one will have zero nodes, MO two will have one node, MO three, two, and MO four, three. The number of nodes is n minus one. So let's start with our lowest node, or our lowest MO rather. We are going to have four atoms, and we would like to have no nodes. So that means each of the unhybridized p orbitals is going to be in phase, meaning I will have the shaded region on top for all of them and unshaded on the bottom. This would be a bonding MO, because when I look at all the interactions, this interaction is bonding, this interaction is bonding, and this interaction is bonding. All three interactions are bonding, so it must be a bonding MO. Let's move to the next one. I have four nuclei. I am going to have to have one node, and for symmetry, I think we need to put that in the center. So what that means when I draw my p orbitals is that initially I may start out with one phase, the shaded phase on top, but when I cross the nodal plane, the shaded phase goes to the bottom. Now as far as what type of um, MO is this, well, red to red, that's going to be bonding. Uh, red to unshaded, that's going to be antibonding, and unshaded to in unshaded, that's going to be bonding. So what you can see is that the bonding and antibonding sort of negate each other, but I'm still left with a bonding, and so this will also be a bonding MO. On to the next one. This one is going to need two nodes, and I need to place them symmetrically. Now it's kind of hard to divide four items into three equal parts. So as far as pictures go, we're simply going to um, put the nodes on either side, so at least it's symmetric. Now when I draw in my unhybridized p orbitals, I may start as shaded, but at the nodal plane I'm going to go to unshaded on top and shaded on the bottom. I will stay that way for the next one. And now I pass through another nodal plane, so I will change the phase and shade on top. As far as the interactions go for this, I am going from a shaded to an unshaded, so that's antibonding. These two are unshaded, so that's bonding, and another transition to an antibonding. So on this one, as I mentioned, antibonding and bonding cancel out, but I am still left with an antibonding. So this raises the energy of this set of orbitals, and it is antibonding. How about our last one? The first and last ones are usually the easiest, because the bottom one has no nodes. The top one is always the all node. So we'll start on top as shaded, and then move to shaded on the bottom, back to shaded on the top, followed by shaded on the bottom. As far as the type of orbital that this is, I'm sure you can guess it is all antibonding, because it has one, two, three antibonding interactions that raise the energy of this orbital. Now, as far as placing electrons in this, there are going to be four electrons in this system. 
So I will put them at the lowest orbital first, pair them up, and I stop at MO2. I have run out of electrons. So MO2 is what we would call the highest occupied molecular orbital. It is the one that has electrons in it at the highest energy. MO3 would be the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. It would be the lowest energy orbital that is empty. And the reason we think about this is sometimes electrons get excited and they, you know, pop up to an empty orbital and pop back down. And this gap between where the electron is and where it can go has something to do with the color that the compound will appear.